Okay. Hi. So, on this edition of Ask Ubon King, I will be answering some questions. And uh, from all the questions you have been asking, I will just start with a few today and answer them. But please note, if you need to ask me any question, please send it on any of my YouTube channels, my YouTube channel, Instagram or Facebook, and I'll pick it up. And then I will be giving you a dedicated number where you can send me your video question so that I could merge it up and answer you and have it on call for you live. So enjoy yourself and let's go there. The first question I'm looking at here is from um, Fisi Ibitruk Kilmi um, on YouTube. And sorry if I, you know, did not pronounce your name well, but your question really got to me. Now your question is, how do I manage family pressure while managing a business? Now that's a very interesting question because I want to believe that um, you are an entrepreneur, you've started a business. One of the challenges about being a businessman is that business takes your time. Now, one of the things I try to do is that I must make sure that I give my family time. In the mornings when I wake up, I must see my family. I don't, you know, push them away. My children come into my bedroom, they play with me, they ask me questions. I don't say, get out of my room, I don't do that. I want them to be part of my space, I want them to feel. Because they learn a lot more when they watch you and when they can feel you. When they are able to come to your room and relate with you, it becomes good. Number two is your your spouse. Your spouse is very important in your success plan. Because as an entrepreneur, that is one person you will definitely be offending a lot because your spouse needs you. If you are going to succeed, you must ensure that you don't joke with your family. On Fridays, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Fridays, especially Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, I can go anywhere. My wife will approve. But when it comes to Friday, I made it conscious that I was going to make time for my wife. So at that point in time, when it comes to Friday evening, I tell my driver to go, she tells her driver to go, and then we go out together. At a point, we must go out together. We'll go out for dinner, we'll go out to watch a movie, we'll go out anywhere, maybe family, friend, visiting, but we spend that time together. So by the time we're driving on the road, now we're able to ask ourselves questions, we're able to talk, you know, and relate to them. So like me, my wife doesn't feel as if I have, you know, removed that into my, out of my world. Trust me, once you are too busy in your company or your business, your wife will feel offended or your husband will feel offended. So if you have to dedicate maybe three hours in a week to take her out, then it becomes important. Now, if you have brothers and sisters, and mother and father, one of the things I always advise is that, especially if you are a, a man and you are married, you can periodically call them. You, um, you don't let them run your business. You don't let them run you. You need to win for you and your immediate family. You must win for you and your immediate family. If you're a woman and you have your retinue of sisters, brother, please, your spouse, your husband is most important and your children is most important. So ensure that you give them their time. Ensure that you relate with them. When you begin to do that, Take as much as possible enough time to discuss your business with your wife or your husband, especially in the in private times when you're in your bedroom, your challenges, you know, your opportunities, your 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 way you are going to your aspiration. Let them see because sometimes they will not know why you are mad, why why you are you are excited, why you are jumping up and down. Trust me, a man with a vision is a madman until that vision comes to pass. So, Fisi, please don't leave out your family carry them along. The only challenge you will have, sometimes they can slow you down a bit, but it's part of the price you'll pay. It's part of the price you'll pay, so get ready for that. That energy you want to go, sometimes your spouse will say, look, give us family time. I remember one time, I have a daughter who is um, eight years old now. Her name is Sarah. Sarah is a very, very, very interesting girl. Sarah will come to my room in the morning and tell me, Daddy, can you pick me up from school? Now, I know that Sarah will close by 2.30. I'm busy, but I will always, you know, look at it. I'll tell her today I cannot come, tomorrow I cannot come. There's a driver. 
There are drivers in the house, but she wants, Daddy, you come and pick me up. She's trying to say to you, I want to connect with you. I want to enter your world. I want to feel you as my father. You know? So after the first time, I said, Sarah, I can't come. Secondly, Sarah, I can't come. You know, I disappoint her. I travel. I now see that she starts looking down, starts looking gloomy and everything. So I now decided that, no, this will not work. So I go and pick Sarah once, maybe once in two weeks. I'll tell Sarah I'm coming to pick you from school. When I say that there's energy in her, yes! And when I go to her, her school and I pick Sarah up, then the next thing we do, we go to a shop, maybe to go and buy a drink, uh, maybe a fizzy drink and then biscuit, not more than 1,000, 2,000 now. And I bring it back and we come back. She's happy, she's happy. So I feed her. I feed my children in secondary school. During visiting, I make it, I, I try to be conscious enough to try and make it. I put it on my calendar, make it this day, you know, as much as possible. When you do that, it goes a long way in touching them. So that when you have to travel, when you have to get on your business, they understand that that business is important, but they also are important. Remember, your direct family is, the, is the, your spouse who you are married to, your, your children, that's your first and most important. Another area to also consider in it is the area whereby it has to do with money. Now, people will always, family, both direct and indirect, everyone wants money. And uh, if they see that you are somebody that has a business, and if your business is good, <laughs> you may, <laughs> your money would always be an important part of the equation. Now, so someone like me, what I did was that I put like my mom on salary, I have my stepmom on salary, I have my mother-in-law salary, my father-in-law, while he was alive, he was on salary. So I have a budget for them every month that goes to them. Now, none of them comes after this time to say, uh, I'm looking for more money. No, 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 no. Manage what you have. Because if you don't put that control, they will, every problem, they'll come to you. Every problem, they'll come to you. Please, as much as possible, do not tamper with your business money to do family runs. Please don't do that. If you have, if you're a business owner, pay yourself a salary and work with that budget because that will help you a lot in being a successful person. So don't forget that, Fisi, and um, I hope this helps a lot. The second question I have is from YouTube and I have from Benjamin Achan. Benjamin Achan is asking me, how can I get a business, how can I get business deals in Nigeria and beyond? The first question I'll ask you is where are you, you know, um, shooting this question from? Ben Benue State. Okay. Now, one of the things that has happened over time is, especially growing my business, is that I first had a target. My target was to build a company that was universally accepted. So I did not build my company based on local standards. I built it based on international standards, whereby I'm able to find out what are the things that are needed for companies outside to look into my own company. Now that is one. Number two is that what services and um, who are the people that I need to provide the services here. If the people I need to provide the services or the products to are here and are not outside, I cannot be praying to do business in America. Take for example, you know like this um, cassava pills, you know cassava um, flakes. Now people do it here and then they they put it together they cut it now it will sell in nigeria it will sell in um in in the local area here in nigeria but it may not sell uh, in in america it may not sell in london so if you think that you want to go and sell you know um cassava pills in america it won't sell because that is not the market now but if you identify that what you what you have is something that will go around one of the best thing i try to do is to create a network that will begin to discuss about your products and services there one of the things you can do is to go to linkedin and then linkedin is a professional um, platform where you can relate and then 
begin to sign up on LinkedIn and then join the, maybe any of the groups that talk about what you're interested in and begin to post comments, receive comments. There'll be questions about that. If you are doing cassava, look for the cassava manufacturing people. You will see them asking questions and call. So then you can contribute, you can learn from them and begin to create relationships. Before you know what is happening, they will start engaging you directly that they need these products and then you have already somebody you can relate with. So you open communication with them, manage the relationship and then begin to sell. Another thing that you must also take into cognizance is that have you exhausted the market here? Or are there too many competition here? Because sometimes it may be because the competition here is too much. You want to go out. No problem about that. But define exactly where you want to go. Who is there and who are your target market? If your target market are not there, then there's no need looking at beyond. Yes, you may want to get dollars. Yes, you may want to get uh, pounds. Yes, you may want to get the Japanese yen. Yes, you may want to get the euro. Yes, you may want to get any foreign currency. But your product or service must be something they need. And then you must identify who are the people that need them. That comes to um, target marketing and also designing who your customer avatar is. Your customer avatar will specify the name, the kind of person, who exactly do you need. Now, if you are selling shoes for children, trust me, an adult will not buy it. It has to be for a child. So you may say that, okay, what I do is shoes for children. Where would you sell it? You go to schools. You know, begin to advertise to the mothers. You go to churches where they do that. It is easy because the mothers will be more interested than a lot of the fathers. So whatever you want to do, product or services you want to do, you create it. Use that network which you have on LinkedIn. LinkedIn, I believe, for me, is the fastest and biggest and the widest professional platform which you can begin to create your your system on and you go out like that. I hope that answers your question, Benjamin. But please learn about people that have done ahead of you. I studied a company called G4S when I was growing my own company. They do security. And at that point in time, G4S was the biggest company in the whole security company in the whole world with over 625,000 staff present in 125 countries. And this company was turning 7.4 billion pounds at that time, equivalent of 2.44 trillion naira. I read everything about that. So I went to their annual report 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013. I listened to, I read everything about them. So sometimes you may need to go to read people that have succeeded in that your industry and read about them as much as possible so that you can get the best out of them. Use their strategy in this local place. There is nothing new under the sun. If it worked there, it can work there. If you apply it effectively and you will get the exact result properly. Okay, now I'm going to IG, okay. IG, I have, um, I have a Sababa Media Group on IG. Sababa Media Group is saying something interesting. It says, how, do you, how did you finance your business? Very, very interesting question. Mm, this, is, this is a very interesting question. But since you have asked, and I said I'll tell you. Now, the first most important part for me is um, I decided to do my time security. So I went on LinkedIn. I didn't know much about my time security. So I decided to find out what kind of businesses my time security was all about. I found out that in a day, there are people that make as much as $25,000 per day on my time security. So let's imagine that they have ten to even $20,000 profit. Then that means they'll be making $2,500, $5,000 in a day. Multiply that by 30 days. That means they'll be making like $5,030, $150,000 a day, a month. Man, that got me interested. So I wanted to find out how do I get this kind of money. Remember, I have told you before one of my series or my videos that get into LinkedIn. So I joined LinkedIn. When I joined LinkedIn, I now began to create relationships on the platform on my time security. Now, when I did that, I began to look at it and I said to myself that, look, I need to ask questions here and answer questions. Now, when they were posting things on the Gulf of Aden, I didn't know Gulf of Aden was Somalia water, so I kept quiet. 
So people kept posting, people kept posting. And I began to listen and read and listen to where the comments were coming from, who were the strong people there and everything. I said, okay, no problem. Then if they ask any question on Nigeria, I will answer. Any question on Lagos, I will answer. Any question on Port Harcourt, I will answer. Any question on Abuja, on Lake, on anywhere in Nigeria, I would answer. So I now became the go-to man anytime it had to do with Nigeria. So a gentleman called me one day and says, King, can you provide security for me from Djibouti to Mombasa? And it was as if what they did was that they thought that Africa was just one country. So I told him yes. Meanwhile, I really did not know where Djibouti was. I've never been to Djibouti. I've never been to Mombasa. But what they wanted to do was to lay optic fiber cables in the seabed and do that. So I told him I could do it. So I called somebody in Kenya who I also met on on um, this book, on, um, on um, LinkedIn. LinkedIn are for professionals, so you will definitely write your profile so people will read about you, search about you before they start talking to you. So the guy said, can you do the work? I said, yes. So I now called my friend in Kenya, and this guy said he would charge them $150,000. I said, no problem. Now talk to the guy directly. And when the deal is now, please pay me my own 10% commission. He said, okay, no problem. In within 24 hours, they had already started sharing, transferring money to each other. So my friend in Kenya called me and said, King, I have received the sum of $150,000. Please, can, I, can you send me your account? Let me pay 10,000, I mean 15, 10%. So that 10% was $15,000. I said, wow, in a day, I've been able to do. So the first way of raising funds is through brokerage. You broker a deal and then charge your commission for it. Now, the guys in Seychelles were very happy, said they were going to give me 10%, I mean 5% of the deal, which was going to come to like $50,000. So what was my equity? My equity was 1,500 Naira MTN recharge card. But what was the deal? The deal for me, income, was $50,000 plus $15,000, which was $65,000. $9.75 million, million Naira was coming my way. Now, so I now said, if there is this kind of money in here, I wanted to relate. So I looked for everybody that I could read their profile that were in Nigeria at that point in time. I began to send them messages. Thank you for you being valuable to the industry. I've been in Nigeria. I want to learn from you. So when I started speaking to them, some of them opened up themselves to me and said, I'm looking now there are jobs around here, small jobs. Will you be able to do it? And I said, yes. So I now agreed I was going to do a job for 12 days and then raising the funds became a challenge because no bank wanted to give me. So I was able to speak to one of the branch managers of the bank and he said, King, you know, we will, we, we, we know that you are, you, are, you, you are going to do the deal, but we don't know you yet. We don't have any bank. So he, I opened an account with him and I created a relationship with him. While I was creating the relationship, his friend told him, look, he didn't need his money for some time. If I could use his money, and I said, yes, I could. So there are people that hear the deal you have and the opportunities. Sometimes they will ask you that you have to give them a certain percentage of that money. And I said, yes, because the interest, the profit was good. I checked the profit, the profit was good. So he gave me the money, loaned me the money, and I, I, I gave him a post-dated check, you know? And, it, and because I had the relationship with the bank, the bank manager says he will hold my check as a guarantee because when the payment is coming from the company, it will come through his bank. So he now decided and did that for me. And they gave me that money, two million to start with. I did the money. And when, my, when the money hit my account, they were able to cash down it. So I had integrity. You cannot grow in business if you don't have integrity. So when I did that, I created a stronger relationship with my bank manager. Now, if you are going to relate with any bank, please ensure you become friends with the bank manager. The bank manager will help you to know what strategy they can help you fund your business. Because sometimes you may say you want a loan. They will tell you you don't need that. There's what they call a discount, uh, invoice discounting, which is you have an invoice and they will pay you a certain percentage of the invoice, you know and then you pay them an interest over 30 days. So you don't need to get money from Shylocks, you don't need to get money from any other person. The banks can do it for you if you create that relationship with your bank manager. So I have relationship with my banker, 
not my bank. So if my banker moves, I follow my banker. He understands me. He understands my business and is able to do that. So from there, I'm able to create that kind of relationship. Another part of raising money for my business is that I use what they call OPM, OPR and OPT. Other people's money, OPM, or other people's resources, OPR, and other people's time, OPT. So I had a case whereby I was to provide services for an embassy and they had 10 VIPs that are coming to this country. So they wanted me to provide security for them. They needed a particular set of assets. I didn't have it. I looked for somebody who had it and I told him I will pay you the money in one week. And he said, okay, fine. And I told my client to pay me the money in three days. And we all agreed. Three days later, I was paid and I paid my um, the person who gave me the assets on the fourth day. Now when I kept my word, he trusted me more so he could give me more assets. Now so integrity is actually the biggest currency you will ever need. So that is the most important thing. Um, this is Sababa Media Group. And the fourth one I have today is um, on YouTube. Uh, YouTube I have um, Bonsi Jude. Bonsi Jude is asking me on YouTube. He's saying, I would love to know the practical steps on how to get out of debt. <laughs> Bonsi Jude, this is a question that um, um, a lot of times is always difficult to answer but I'll give you the best advice I can. The first and most important advice I'll give you is stop incurring debt. It kills your confidence. It kills your self-achievement goals. It kills it. Stop acquiring debt, you know, getting yourself into debt, borrow money here, borrow money here, stop it. Now, you're already in debt. So one of the things I will tell you to do is itemize all the debt you owe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Itemize all and how much it is. Now, once you do that, categorize the debt. A, B, or C. So the ones you consider as high priority, those are A. The ones that are mid priority, those are B. The ones that are low priority, those are C. Focus on the ones that are A as much as possible and deal with those ones. You'll find out that your debt ratio. Now, when you want to deal with those ones that are A, what you have is okay what kind of payment plan can you put in place to knock off the pressure from a because if you don't have that payment plan it can cost you a lot of challenge so have a payment plan and then be able to negotiate as much as possible it can be hostile sometimes it can be insulting sometimes it can be you know but have a payment plan for A and stick to that plan. You deal with A, then go to B, then finish with C. That is how you practically do that. But make sure you stop bleeding. Stop raising debt. Otherwise, you will be in serious trouble. So that is all I'll take for today. Looking forward to you posting your questions on YouTube, Facebook, on Instagram, you know, and making it happen. I will now pick it up and then answer it. And for those of you, please watch out on this link. We will be putting up a number whereby you can send in a video, WhatsApp video, and then we'll do a video response to you. So on this session of Ask Kubon King, I want to say thank you for asking me. And then it's, I hope I answered your question. So tomorrow or next time when we meet, uh, please ensure you are here. So if you are not yet subscribed to this channel, please go now, subscribe to my channel and then place the, the notification button there, the, that one, yes, click it. Now, so that any new video that comes, 
you'll be the first to see it on Ask Ubon King on my channel Ubon King. So I want to wish you the very best and stay profitable, stay successful, stay on top, and please don't be afraid to ask questions. Ask Ubon King. Thank you.